Today you join me inside the 2019 Chevrolet Malibu RS. This is a trim level that you have to pay extra for to get a little bit more performance and sporty feeling out of the car. And to do that, Chevrolet has added a ton of upgrades to the exterior and the interior of this car. We're gonna get into all that in just a minute, but first I'd like to give my driving impressions because this is the RS model, so it's supposed to feel just a little bit sportier when you're driving it. And unfortunately, I think that's where this car falls short because they didn't upgrade the powertrain. It's the same 1.6 liter Ecotec turbo four cylinder you get in the base Malibu. They went to extreme lengths to give this car a better exterior styled after the Camaro, a better interior with upgraded leathers and technology, but the driving experience hasn't changed at all. And this wouldn't be as disappointing if they didn't also offer a two liter turbo four with 250 horsepower in the premium model. So you pay extra for the luxury package and you get an upgraded engine, but you pay extra for the sport package and you don't. And to me, that's what's disappointing with this car. It's a very quiet ride, it's a very comfortable ride, but the steering has no feedback whatsoever and the engine is just a little bit lazy. And you know what? It doesn't feel sporty. Unless you're sitting on a tripod. I have to say that for the price range in this segment of cars, the Malibu RS's interior is surprisingly high quality, especially when you look at some of the materials they used here on the optional multi-function three-spoke steering wheel and on the gear selector. These are upgraded in the RS trim level like the model we're in to be this nice, soft, genuine leather. It's very, very beautiful to look at, very, very soft to hold. Reminds me of something you'd get in an Audi or a BMW or a Mercedes. And you do have to pay extra for it. Like I said, this isn't coming in the base Malibu, but what's great is that when you do pay extra for it, they're not giving you any fluff. It's just the two things you're touching most often, the steering wheel and the shift knob. So you don't have to pay extra for it in places you're not gonna be touching like on the headliner or on the door panel. Those are nice to have in a luxury car, but here in a car that's less than $30,000, you don't wanna to have to spend extra on things like that that aren't absolutely necessary. But it is a nice upgrade to have here on the steering wheel. Now, speaking of the multi-function part of the steering wheel, it kind of has a unique design where the buttons have a rubbery sort of feel to them. And I see a lot of luxury manufacturers using touch screens here, but the problem with that is you get smudges and fingerprints all over it. And this rubber design might actually be better if you ask me. When you're actually pressing these buttons, they feel a little bit like some sort of rubbery calculator I used back when I was in elementary school. So it's kind of an interesting design, but it works very well with this interior. It looks somewhat high quality and it is very easy to use. Now, speaking of the button placement and ergonomics and things like this, this car really isn't the best in terms of layout, but I definitely like where they put the climate controls and how they organized all of that. Very easy to understand, easy to use on the fly when you're trying to focus on driving. They also included a very large gauge cluster with four different analog gauges and a very small driver display that's gonna give you a little bit of extra information while you're driving. But we're gonna get more in depth with the technology in just a minute. Back to the materials used in this car, the seats come standard as cloth covered. You also get that same cloth here on the door panel and also on the dashboard. Like I said, rather than using a gloss black piece to accent the interior, they used the cloth on the seats, but with a cool kind of diamond pattern design on it. And it actually looks surprisingly good here in the interior and kind of gives it a less harsh look to it, especially here in the bright Florida sunshine, that gloss black that so many other cars in this segment are using that would reflect light back into your face. It would get smudges all over it. This cloth design is actually really, really smart and cost effective as well. The three rear seats come with plenty of headroom and legroom. I had the opportunity to check them out. They're just as comfortable as the front seats. And the trunk comes with a decent amount of cargo space as well. Obviously not the best that I've seen before, but very easy to load stuff in and out. And they have latches on either side of the trunk that you can press to lower the rear seats so you can get even more cargo space back there and uh, really stretch out. Something that's becoming more and more important in modern cars like the Malibu RS is the technology. So obviously I already mentioned before that small screen on the gauge cluster, but that's not nearly as important as the main feature of this interior. The thing that all the other design elements in the car congregate around and that's this infotainment touchscreen 
It's eight inches. Like I said, a touchscreen comes with Bluetooth compatibility, standard Apple CarPlay, standard Android Auto, and it's actually a surprisingly good system from what I'm seeing so far. Something I'm noticing right away that I like, the home button is right next to the steering wheel. Very easy to find, very easy to use, and get you back to that home menu where we can see a variety of different apps you can use in this interior. Here we can see Android Auto, Apple CarPlay, like I said before. You can also have a Wi-Fi 4G LTE hotspot in this car if you want to pay extra for that. So that's a very nice feature as well. You can definitely use your phone in the interior of this car when you're away from home. And they also included a charge port beneath this dashboard so you can charge it up for a little bit of extra juice. Now in terms of navigation, you do have to pay extra for that. That is not a feature on this model. But again, if that's important to you to have a GPS in this car, you can pay extra. It'll give you another little app here for your navigation. So you can use that kind of similar to Google Maps. Unfortunately, there's not a ton of different features to discuss on this infotainment system, but just take my word for it in terms of the quality of the touchscreen and the layout and the graphics and everything. It's easily on par, if not better than Ford and all the other manufacturers that Chevy is trying to compete with, with the Malibu RS. Now, Chevy did redesign a few things on the exterior of all the Malibus for the 2019 model year. They kind of opened the front end of the car up a little bit more. They took away the big body colored stripe across the front that kind of blocked up the grills. They made it a lot more aggressive, kind of similar to the new 2019 Camaros. But the RS receives even more upgrades that are really going to set it above a car like this base Malibu. And it starts off with this sport grill. Now, as we can see on the base or this LT Malibu, you've got a really bright chrome accent piece that goes all the way around the grill and in through some of the slats up here. And it doesn't look bad, but in an RS model where it's a little bit more performance oriented and sporty, you're not necessarily going for bright chrome. You want something a little bit more stealthy. So that's why they upgraded the grill on the Malibu RS to this dark chrome design. And it looks very cool up here. And it also matches the upgraded Chevrolet badges. They're now blacked out on the exterior of the RS. Every badge you see that's a Chevy badge, it's going to be blacked out to give you that stealth look you're looking for with the Malibu RS. One thing I'm not a huge fan of on the exterior of the new Malibus is this little section right here where we've got the fog lamps, which first of all, those look super outdated, like some sort of big, you know, light housing you'd find back in 2006 instead of 2019. I'd rather see some sort of sharp LED light bar here rather than this big, really kind of ugly looking piece here. They've also integrated some fake grills down here. These perform no function whatsoever. They're just there for style. And I think they break up the front design of the car a little bit. They don't even match the rest of the grills up here. It just looks a little bit out of place. And since it's not functional, it doesn't even need to be there. But moving along to the side, we're gonna see a couple extra upgrades for the RS model, such as these wheels. Now on the standard Malibus, you do get a couple different styles as far as the rims go. I believe you get sizes from 16 inches all the way up to 21 inches. Here with the Malibu RS, you do get the upgraded 18 inch dark chrome five spoke RS sport wheels. These look very nice on the side of the car. Again, it kind of continues that stealth design from the front grille. It's gonna help you blend in a little bit on the road and at night and give your car a really aggressive look when compared to a base Malibu or an LT Malibu like this one. Another thing I'm not a huge fan of though are these mirror caps. As you can see with this LT, they're upgraded to this nice body color design that fits in with the rest of the exterior. Well, here on the Malibu RS, you're paying extra for upgrades on the exterior, but they didn't upgrade these mirror caps. It's that same matte, cheap, plasticky feeling that I'm just not a big fan of, especially on an upgrade sport model like this. So I wish they could have done something like this, maybe make it some sort of a gloss black or integrate a turn signal on the side here and really flare out the design of this a little bit instead of this basic matte plastic design here. But if you can ignore that, things do get a little bit better in the rear of the car where the RS receives two more upgrades. It gets dual chrome exhaust tips for a sportier sound from the engine, as well as a bit of a spoiler lip there to help provide extra downforce to the rear wheels or just to make it look a little bit cooler. As far as the lighting goes on the exterior, I believe the LT and the RS are going to have the same basic lighting features, but you can pay extra to upgrade to daytime running lamps in LED to give the front end of your car a sharper look and LED taillights in the rear to help other drivers on the road know when you're stopping. So it helps improve safety a little bit and makes the front of your car and the rear of your car look a lot better. So all around, you do get a few extra add-ons here on the Malibu RS when compared to a base or an LT Malibu. Whether it's worth the extra cost, that's entirely up to you. 
Make sure to check out some reviews I've done of similar cars by clicking on one of the video cards right there and make sure to let me know down in the comment section if you think it's worth the RS upgrade on the Malibu. Is it worth the extra cost? Let me know what you think. Special thanks to Dimit Chevrolet in Clearwater, Florida for providing me with this Malibu to review today. And as always guys, thank you so much for watching.